doom had came to Sarnath by H.P. Lovecraft. There is in the land of Gnar a vast still lake that is fed by no stream and out of which no stream flows. Then, a thousand years ago, there stood by its shore the mighty city of Sarnath. But Sarnath stands there no more. It is told that the immemorial years when the world was young, before ever the men of Sarnath came to the land of Nar, another city stood beside the lake. The grey stone city of Ib, which was old as the lake itself, beings of a world yet inquit and rudely fashioned. It is written on the brick cylinders of Catheron that the beings of Ib were in you as green as the lake, as green as the lake and the mists that rise above it, that they had bulging eyes, pouting flabby lips and curious ears, and were without voice. It is also written that they descended one night from the moon in a mist, they and the vast still lake and grey stone city Ib. However this may be, it is certain that they worshipped a sea-green stone idol, chiseled in the likeness of Bokrok, the great water lizard, before which they danced horribly when the moon was gibbous. kindled flames on many ceremonial occasions, but not much is written of these beings, because they lived in very ancient times, and man is young and knows little of the very ancient living things. After many aeons, men came to the land of Gnar, dark shepherd folk with their fleecy flocks. tribes, more hardy than the rest, pushed on to the border of the lake and built Sarnath at a spot where precious metals were found in the earth. Not far from the grey city of Ib did the wandering tribes lay the first stones of Sarnath, and at the beings of Ib they marveled greatly, but with their marveling was mixed hate for they thought it not meet that beings of such aspect should walk about the world of men at dusk. Nor did they like the strange sculptures, strange sculptures upon the grey monoliths of Ib, for those sculptures were terrible with great antiquity. Why the beings in the sculptures lingered so late in the world, even until the coming of men, none can tell, unless it was because the land of Nar is very still and remote from most other lands, both of waking and of dream. As the men of Sarnath beheld more of the beings of Ib, their hate grew, and it was not less because they found beings weak and soft as jelly to the touch of stones and spears and arrows. So one day, the young warriors, the slingers, and the spearmen, and the bowmen, marched against Ib, and slew all the inhabitants thereof, pushing the queer bodies into the lake with long spears, because they did not wish to touch them, and because they did not like the grey sculptured monoliths of Ib, they cast these also into the lake, wandering from the greatness of the However, the stones were brought from afar, as they must have been, since there is not like them in all the land of Na, or in the lands adjacent. Thus, of the very ancient city of Ib was nothing spared, save the sea-green stone idol chiseled in the likeness of Bokrok, the water lizard. This the young warrior 
warriors took back with them to Sarnath as a symbol of conquest over the old gods and beings of Ib, and a sign of leadership in La. But on the night after it was set up in the temple, a terrible thing must have happened, for weird lights were seen over the lake, and in the morning the people found the idol gone, and the high priest Tyrannish lying dead, as from some fear unspeakable. And before he died, Tyrannish had scrawled upon the altar of Chrysolite with coarse, shaky strokes the sign of doom. After Taranish, there were many high priests in Sarnath, but never was the sea green stone idol found, and many centuries came and went wherein Sarnath prospered exceedingly, so that only priests and old women remembered what Taranish had scrawled upon the altar of Chrysalid. Betwixt Sarnath and the city of Larnak arose a caravan route, and the precious metals from the earth were exchanged for other metals and rare cloths and jewels and books and tools for artifices and all things of luxury that are known to the people who dwell along the winding river I and beyond. So Sarnath waxed mighty and learned and beautiful and sent forth conquering armies to subdue the neighboring cities and in time there set a men drave them along the top. For full five hundred stadia did they run, being open only on the side toward the lake, where a green stone sea wall kept back the waves that rose oddly once a year at the festival of the destroying of Ib. In Sarnath were fifty streets from the lake to the gates of the caravans, and fifty more intersecting them. Sidoni, each having its walk garden and crystal lakelet. With strange art were they builded, for no other city had houses like them, and travellers from Fra and Larnac and Cathetheron marvelled at the shining domes wherewith they were surmounted. But more marvellous still were the palaces and the temples and the gardens made by Sokka, the olden king. There were many palaces, the least of which were mightier than any in Thra, or Larnak, or Kadatharon. So high were they that one within might sometimes fancy himself beneath only the sky. Yet, when lighted with torches dipped in the oil of Dother, their walls shewed vast paintings of kings and armies, of a splendor at once inspiring and stupefying to the beholder. Many were the pillars of the palaces, all of tinted marble and carven into designs of surpassing beauty, and in most of the palaces the floors were mosaics of beryl and lapis lazuli, and sardonyx and carbuncle and other choice materials, so disposed that the beholder might fancy himself walking over beds of the rarest flowers, and there were likewise fountains, which cast scented waters about in pleasing jets, arranged with cunning 
piece of ivory, though no man lives, who knows when so vast a piece could have come. In the palace there were also many galleries and many amphitheaters, where lions and men and elephants battled at the pleasure of the kings. Sometimes the amphitheaters were flooded Yes. 
was long ere any traveller went thither, and even then only the brave and adventurous young men of distant Falona dared make the journey. Adventurous young men of yellow 